my dear friends uh, good morning to all i think you are all in the uh, limited view mute module uh, let me take immense pleasure in uh, welcoming the chief guest of today's function one of my favorite students uh, from the mechanical department of png tech an alumnus and uh, he is uh, and belongs to the 1995 batch and he completed his be mechanical in the year 2000 uh, he was the best outgoing student from the department of mechanical sandwich stream and the year 2000 and uh, uh, we have seen him uh, functioning in phg tech uh, he is uh, mr uh, dr gopala krishnan who is currently the director engineering of st mary's university in usa because i think quite a good number of you might be having plans to uh, prepare for going abroad would like to look for good universities maybe try for internship in universities abroad uh, i'm sure uh, dr gopala krishnan who is our speaker today will be able to give you some valuable tips in that line and uh, <clears throat> to say a few more words about him he is uh, basically a mechanical engineer then did his masters in operations research then focused on supply chain management as a part of his uh, research uh, which he completed in texas a&m university uh, at college station in usa then subsequently he joined as a faculty in st mary's university in the year 2008 uh, and currently he is the chairman for engineering at st mary's uh, university since 2016 and he has worked on several sponsored research projects so before you can just uh, get to know more about such projects internships abroad in many companies which include pepsico national oil well etc uh, rig manufacturer and uh, he has also worked on good number of uh, supply chain projects uh, at uh, in the city of uh, san antonio and of course he has also done some good work in saudi arabia and he has to his credit a uh, number of research publications uh, in journals like uh, naval research logistics then you have institution of uh, industrial engineers transactions and good number of journals he has also presented uh, several papers in invited sessions uh, while he was in coimbatore uh, of course so he has also done wonderful work in the area of operations research and uh, management uh, he is also a refereed uh, rather a referee for reputed journals which include uh, international industrial engineering transactions and uh, european journal of operations research computers and industry industrial engineering and so on and so forth uh, this is about uh, in brief about his uh, current uh, uh, you know setup and if you really see him uh, in fact uh, both uh, vice principal and myself at the Uh, opportunity to be in close touch with him when he was in uh, phd tech we have taught a couple of courses also for him and uh, as we understand he was one of the very very studious students in the sandwich stream uh, he will be able to tell us more about what is sandwich and uh, what is it that distinguishes a sandwich program from a regular program you know what are the benefits of uh, being a sandwich student okay that all those points he will share with us uh, also he will be uh, telling uh, what to do and what not to do you know as we saw the other day another uh, speaker had talked about importance of focus not getting distracted and all so he is also going to elaborate perhaps on these these lines because all these are from his uh, personal experience and uh, uh, i would like to tell a small point he just had a 3 hour class uh, he completed a 3 hour class at uh, uh, let's say 8:45 and here he is with us at 9 o'clock no break uh, typical faculty uh, routine it looks uh, the job of a faculty is simple but of course you can make out non stop marathon he's going to 
take up one hour, one more hour so i take uh, once again immense pleasure in welcoming dr gopalakrishnan on behalf of phd i tech and on my personal behalf and on behalf of all of you and i am sure that you will have another interesting session from a phd alumnus uh, who is currently working abroad and uh, please feel free to uh, put down your questions so that we can take them up and uh, see that this session is quite useful to all of you and we are extremely happy that uh, all of you are taking active part in all uh, sessions without any exception and of course uh, we'll have uh, uh, quite interesting uh, follow up sessions also that means uh, uh, i just want to say that all the videos of our speakers are being uploaded in our uh, college website reports are also being uploaded so that you can use them for your reference not only now for future also so that at an appropriate time you can connect to these videos go through the reports and uh, definitely your study of the reports will be useful uh, when you come to the uh, you know the concluding session where you have to make a summary of your observations what transformations you are going to undergo subsequent to the induction program so therefore that is more important so therefore remain in touch so that you can answer all the questions pretty well all the uh, the talks of our uh, vips uh, will be available both in the youtube as well as a report form you can take print out and then have a look at the reports also so that you can answer the questions pretty well okay uh, more importantly yeah um, uh, more importantly the uh, i think i in the last session also i mentioned you all know that the pragati scholarship for girl candidates women candidates the last date is 30th of this month please do feel free to get in touch with us and apply for the same perhaps of course uh, this time it should go through the college as i understand and almost all of our uh, girl students uh, whose parent income is within that 8 lakhs will be eligible for the scholarship and we wish that this year good number of students girl students from our institution should back that uh, scholarship of rupees uh, 50000 per year okay and of course uh, there is also the saksham scholarship for some of the students with who are differently able whether it is male or female okay you have to simply apply you will get it whereas for the pragati scholarship there is a limit on the number of scholarships and for the state of tamil nadu it is 800 okay i'm sure uh, about 80 students from our institution okay should back that scholarship let's all work together and make it uh, complete over to our vice principal sir professor chandra mohan very good morning gopal krishnan very good evening sir good morning good morning to all very glad to meet you after a long gap of 20 years in fact myself principal we were all working for more than 30 years and good morning to all my students of first year in 30 years of our teaching we cannot forget some students one such student is dr gopal krishnan in fact i remember in fact the way in which he was a phd tech he was staying in hostel but he will be in the campus always morning 8 o'clock to evening 9 o'clock when the classes will be held from 4:45 to 8:45 even after 8:45 he will not go to hostel he will be staying in the campus he will be working very very hard i don't know I mean how many hours he took for sleep even in those days now principal was telling gopal kishan had class 3 hours my dear students now the time is 9:30 pm am i right sir gopal krishnan yes sir yeah, yeah. now after handling class in the evening for 3 hours he is ready to spend more than hour to itech students you can see the energy of gopal krishnan amazing gopal krishnan chill i think you are looking fresh and you are ready to i think i give advice to our students yesterday mr nagarajan i think our it student mr gopal krishnan who passed out in the year 19 2019 two years back is working in new sigma he has given advice to our students he told one point that 
the skill level of the student or any person if the skill level goes up his work has to come down that is what the industry is prepared so students can see gopal krishna his skill level goes up 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 and all and his ego comes down 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 and all excellent person gopal krishna very very glad to see your uh, children room with all toys and all books very neatly kept you can also show your uh, projector and all to our students they will be more interested to see the facilities and you can share your rich experience of psg tech as well as to our institute where you are working now now the stage is for dr gopal krishnan very very happy to invite you to deliver a talk to our students gopal krishnan you can take over thank you thank you wish you wish you all a very good morning it is my immense pleasure to come back home this is my birthplace uh, the two professors that i am seeing uh the principal and the vice principal sirs they have been my dearest uh, faculty members who I, i have looked upon as my mentors uh so it is an immense pleasure to come back home uh i i feel that we are at a 10000 mile distance but to do this it is awesome so technology has advanced significantly to enable us to meet like this and i'm very thankful for this uh to both the sirs uh, you have uh, shared a lot of information probably way beyond what i deserve at this night i guess uh, thank you for that i really am uh, very pleased to meet all of the students and uh, especially the freshman students joining uh, the very prestigious institution uh before we get started may i request at least a few of you guys to turn your camera on because all i see is uh, my gurus and i don't want to be lecturing to my gurus right <laughs> that to after 25 years of graduation i don't want to do that so may i request at least some of you to turn your camera on so that i can see and connect let's see i have uh, about one 68 attendees other than the uh, two camps on don't be shy it's okay i'm actually in my kids room this is not my room my room is not this organized it's full of books all over the place uh, so don't be shy you can turn your camera on at least a few so that i can see <laughs> I think some of us are connecting to the audio. Uh, please feel free to turn your video on as well. Awesome, uh, Ganesh. Thank you, uh, Rishwant. Thank you. The others, I see the uh, registration numbers. I guess. Uh, thank you so much, Vengatraj. Thank you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, looking at you, I feel like I'm. Uh, you know, I'm remembering and recalling. my freshman days the day i joined uh, psg tech that's what i'm remembering now uh just to give a brief background and the motivation to come to psg right uh i my father is a chartered accountant uh my mom uh, she is in uh field very close to accountancy bachelor of commerce master of commerce uh my father's three brothers all chartered accountants my grandpa was a chartered accountant so as a kid growing up till the 12th grade every day when i brush my teeth and come back i see a chartered accountant right a bunch of chartered accountants i have breakfast with whom do i dine chartered accountants then i go to school i come back home who are they uh, uh, receiving me at home they are chartered accountants so by the 12th grade somehow in my brain i think in my conscience as well as subconscious uh, i i had this feeling of whatever i'm going to do it's not going to be ca it's not going to be in accounting there has to be something out in this world that uh, we should be able to explore and have fun with right so i was completely motivated to do something different but i very vividly remember uh, in the 10th grade uh, going and requesting the principal of the high school it is uh, tvs lakshmi madurai uh, went there to the principal's office 
uh, initially I made a mistake of registering for the biology group uh, to possibly apply for medicine. Uh, the very first lab, the zoology lab, where they asked me to dissect a frog, that's when I ran to the principal's office and I said, please switch me over to computer science. This is not something that I'm capable of, right? So that's how I landed in the engineering uh, group and it, made, it seemed to be like an obvious choice. By the first year, right, by the very first year when I joined PSG, it was a totally different experience. Very unique experience coming through the sandwich program. 12th standard graduation, all I could think of was, yes, I'm sure I need to go for engineering, but what engineering? With a house full of accountants, that's of no help. <laughs> so they pointed me to different people. One of them said, uh, you have to do mechanical. Mechanical is the foundation of all engineering, therefore, right? The other said chemical, east or west, chemical is the best. You should take chemical. Somebody else said, well, the trend is in software, so perhaps software is the best, right? And uh, I still remember one of them telling me, if you are not doing biomed, you are ruining your life. That's somebody that who told me that. So when people, you know, talk about things, it was information out of a fire hose, right? You're trying to put out a fire using a fire engine. That's how big of information come through uh, to you. And it's very unlikely that we will realize the significance of all these things. But PSG Tech, the first day, first class that I had was in a foundry. I had to wear as a sanded student, a blue and blue, the sky blue and sky blue, very unique uniform. Uh, had to go into PSG Industrial Institute, uh, walk through the foundry division, was in the core making division where they were pressing green sand and creating a mold and placing core inside that. Uh, sky blue shirt, sky blue pant came out with dark gray and black patches all over. But the reason why I'm saying this is because we had so much fun learning and doing very first day. And the very first class that we went to, uh, we had a faculty come in and teach. The faculty members, especially in PSG institutions, all institutions are very experienced and they have rich industry experience, right? So when they started to talk about a class, give an introduction to mechanical engineering, that was the class, right? When they started to talk about something, things connected. Things were not like Bohr's atom model that I learned in physics or uh, Geldal's equation, right? Out of the blue, uh, you have to learn some equation, balance the equations, talk about some experiments. It was not like that at all. It got me totally excited to go further and explore some of these concepts. One of the beautiful things, again, this is experience from uh, the PSG tech, as well as comparing to the US, right? What I'm seeing right now is the connection to faculty. I know many of you uh, are just joining the institution, just registering for the institution, going through the orientation. One thing that I want to tell you is to connect with faculty. As a freshman, just like just you're, you're looking at me on the screen, I'm not sure if you're able to look at your peers. My face looked just like one of you. Now it's old, growing gray hair, <laughs> receding perhaps, but it was just like one of you. Imagine that. And I went to the doorsteps of Dr. Mohan Ram. I went to the doorsteps of Dr. Chandra Mohan at that point in time. They were, uh, gracious, magnanimous heart, right? That showed up in, in tutoring, in holding like a baby's hand and showing how to walk the steps through. It's going to be stressful. I'm not going to discount that. Engineering is about rigor. Engineering is about competency, gaining that competency and developing a core competency for yourself. It is going to be hard. Hard work is essential paying attention, going to every single class, preparing for class, all those are essential. But please don't stop short right there. Because what helps you grow and blossom as an engineer, this is not just me, this is my entire class doing it, right? And in fact, 
anybody in in, uh, in PSG Tech, when we shared some of these information, it was not just in mechanical engineering, it was across the college. This was the culture back then, to go and talk to faculty members. Very professional, but yet friendly. Very caring, nurturing faculty members. That is something that I don't think we have in the US. Now, let me clarify that when I say that. That professional friendliness, people have that in the heart, but they may not find time to do that. Because when you look at large institutions in the US, especially research-based institutions, right? People focus on their own research. They have to bring in money, sponsor their research, publish, so on and so forth. So the closest interactions happen between doctoral level students or master students who do thesis, right? Now that's something that we got from PhD, irrespective of you know, how big the institution is, PhD Tech also has graduate programs, PhD institutions that are uh, doctoral programs, right? So still faculty members found that time and mentored many of us who did not have a clue of what the engineering was, but who probably knew from sources that uh, are not necessarily, you know, uh, from the expert uh, field of expertise. So just like, for example, Wikipedia, right? I would go and read what is mechanical engineering, what is software engineering, what is out there in supply chain management, perhaps. So that was the limited knowledge that we had. Very, very magnanimous in terms of holding our hands and showing through the process. First year, at the, at the end of the first year, first year alone, it's not a semester based, right? You, you take the, it was the entire year. Third semester onwards, it was semester based. So first year you take physics, chemistry, uh, you are still having the inertia of the high school flowing into the uh, college, uh, right, uh, syllabus. So go through this, but notice the subtle differences. I don't know how much uh, pressure you had while finishing up the 12th grade, anybody, everybody from a vegetable vendor to the person who uh, probably keeps their, uh, does the housekeeping work at home, everybody will be advising us, right? You have to graduate with high grades. You have to get into a great college, a great program, so on and so forth. Now, this day, nobody is giving you that pressure. You are on your own. So you can build a kingdom without any of those stress behind you. You are at a great institution. And I'm not saying this for the sake of saying it, right? You, you are seeing very many people coming back and interacting with you. You see their qualifications. So the people behind this are the faculty members who are still there and training you guys, right? So the best thing that can happen to you is to connect with faculty members. What do I mean by that? Don't have any agenda. Don't go and you know, ask about a specific question and talk about that specific, don't, don't have any of those in your mind because that would inhibit your conversation. Just go to your faculty, pick up some conversation regarding a career path, regarding something that you are very passionate about, regarding the faculty member's area of interest and and just talk about it. And it's actually better if you go as a group, right? It helps. Or right after the class, don't let the faculty go to their office, right? Keep them for a few minutes and talk to them. I think I'm giving a wrong advice here. Uh, the, so we, <laughs> uh, Bonham sir may not be as happy here, right? But hold on to the faculty, talk to them, connect to them, it is very important. First year, it is difficult because you are transitioning from a high school to a college it is a little bit difficult. You see that student teacher, you know, as a, as a different generation, right? Engineering education is a little different. This is a professional place. You are going through a professional program, which means whatever is in the books, whatever you understand from class, that, is al that alone are not enough. You have to go a little bit beyond. You have to create your own ideas, your own products. I still remember in those good old days, I'm not sure if uh, any of you understand this when I say this. Do you know what a transparency sheet is? or overhead projector is? I'm not sure that technology exists anymore. 
So we all have electronic projectors. I still remember uh, Professor Sandra Mohan came to class. It was a very interesting class. This was the very first class, right? At the end of the class, he wrote with a pen on the transparency sheet. You know, the transparency sheet that we use for face shield. That's a new use we have found, right? So on that sheet, he wrote, uh, love what you do or do what you love. Am I right, Dr. Sandra Mohan? Yes, 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 yeah. <laughs> Very clearly, I remember that. And th there are a few things that stay with you, right? Things like that, that inspire you. And, and another thing that uh, Dr. Mohan Ram mentioned in uh, Mechanics of Machines class, right? At some point in time, we were discussing about certain mechanisms, uh, certain design, and uh, I don't know how we conveyed that. At some point, we actually conveyed the idea that we are terribly afraid of failure. We wouldn't say that to, a, to our professor, right? Because that itself is giving up, and that is inviting bad marks, perhaps, right? But somehow, that came out. And this is from a group of students. He took us aside and he said a few things. And the gist of it is never be afraid of failures. Well, don't, don't make mistake knowingly. That's not what he said, but never be afraid to fail. So what? So what? You failed. So what? What can you learn from this experience? How can you better that the next time? Can you hedge the risk that you are facing somehow in the next time? and do it a little better. What is the point of stressing out, thinking about failure all the time, holding on to that negative thought? What is the benefit of that, right? In fact, what happens when you take this as a positive thing that has happened to you and take this as a learning experience and go further? Now, again, there are a few things that are here, recorded here in this brain, in this memory, that actually propelled us further. The training that the faculty members gave us, you know, we were at the beginning, 50 students in the sandwich program, mechanical engineering program. One student transferred out to uh, another program within PhD Tech. One student, uh, unfortunately, uh, dropped out of the program. But the remaining 48, we graduated. Out of the 48, Within the first year of graduation, uh, I don't know why it happened, how it happened, 25 of us were in the United States, either doing masters, uh, three of us in the class that I know of finished doctoral degrees. The others came here at least at one point in time, when I say here, the US, on a rotation, on their project rotation for their employment, right? So people have visited either Europe or the US or Australia or someplace. We did not necessarily plan for any of these. For the five years we had spent in the sandwich program, we never planned for it. So why am I saying this? There are going to be excellent opportunities, excellent things happening your way as well, but you need to pay attention to some of the things. The faculty members who come to your class they are not necessarily training you to answer. It would seem like it when you are in the class, right? But what they are training you for is to solve problems in real world. You would be going to class. You would be listening to a mechanical engineering faculty member in uh, design of machine elements doing uh, Chevy Shaves inequality, right? You, you would be so interested, taking notes, memorizing the formulas, uh, working through it a few times, maybe 10 times, all good. But the faculty member, look at them in the class session, during the class session, look at them. What they are talking to you is that they are setting you up for solving problems beyond what the textbook says, right? So some of the faculty members who we have interacted they have point blank told us, you're not going to solve this textbook problem, but unless you pass this, how are you going to even stand up to the real problems, right? Uh, so many people come to uh, the mind here. Uh, Professor Shivanandam from uh, ECE department. <laughs> My friends from ECE told me that one day he stopped. He just wrote a problem on the board and he just 
stood there for students to respond to that problem. This was the first year experience, right? Sometimes we were not able to see through this. After graduation, it was very clear when we look back, what were they training us for? To look at the big picture, not necessarily take a textbook problem, solve it, right? That's, the, that's the, probably the high school mentality. We take some problem, we have to have a solution. Unless we derive the solution, we have failed. If we have gotten the solution, we have passed, that mentality is gone. In fact, I remember, uh, I, again, this is credit to Dr. Mohan Ram. Uh, you know, he took a group of students, group of eight undergraduate students, about five master students in industrial engineering and uh, some in production. And he put us through a project for uh, developing a computer aided process planning system for defense research and development labs at Hyderabad. So uh, look at the student who came to PhD Tech, right, from a homegrown atmosphere of accountants, going through different steps, right, in PhD Tech, having so much fun, not at the hostel, you have to have fun at the hostel, but spend most of your time on campus, on this side of campus, right? Go to the, go to the laboratories. That's your spot. Make your own space there in the labs, right? And having gone through all that, suddenly one day he took us to a team of scientists. So at DRDL, they don't call engineers as engineers. Defense Research Development Lab, they call people as scientists. Scientist grade B, scientist grade C, grade uh, D, and so on and so forth. So as the letter go deeper into the alphabets, the higher the grade they are, right? Group of scientists, and he just put us all forward and he said, yes, come on Raja, interact with them and learn what the problem is, solve it. That's your final year project. How does that sound for you? Right? So he had so much in his mind to expose the students to real life problems. Of course, it was his neck on the line if we don't give a solution to them, right? The RDL is expecting a solution from PSG, but uh, you know he walked us through that process. He taught us how to uh, look at a problem definition. What is, a, what is a project? How do you plan to manage a project? If you have different people in your team, how do you interact with them? It was way beyond the technical expertise that we needed to solve the problem. How to interact with a bunch of scientists? Suddenly, you know, you're put in with a, along with a group of scientists, you are in a room, you're discussing some very important problem that you have never heard of. Probably, you know, computer-aided process planning, it's a, it's a well-known uh, software module in, a, in an ERP system now. But at that point in time, it was something very new. Maybe you are looking at something new like that, right? So don't be ever afraid. We were, at that point in time, the very first meeting, we were very excited, but we were afraid. We kept quiet. We talked to the minimum. <laughs> uh, even though it, you know, it turned out to be okay later, the scientists interacted with us very well. Uh, they asked good questions of us, what our understanding was on the problem. And then we sir, facilitated a stay of about one week there in Hyderabad. A very rich experience that we all had. So the point here that I'm trying to make is two things. Faculty members, connect with them. In high school, that's a totally different story. Here, unless you connect with the faculty member who is a practitioner of the things that they teach in the class, right? How are we going to know what's happening in the real world? Right? So it's very important. I see some of you nodding. So thank you. I appreciate that. The second thing is work on real life problems. Now, there is a prerequisite for that. First year, probably take your time studying the material. You need the formal preparation. First year classes, go to your classes. Even before you go to your classes, right? Your faculty member, the professor, would have shared what they would teach in the next session of the class please read the book before you go to the class, okay? In, in our group, I still remember at least four of us discussing, having hot conversations just before lunch, before we go to classes in the evening. 
and those conversations were about misunderstanding or understanding correctly some of the concepts that the faculty member would teach or would have said and these things they are very important they they sound to be somewhat nerdy i can get that i understand that i also get got that from uh, my peers but it helps you being prepared to go to class actually helps you a lot form groups form smaller groups where you can focus where you can comfortably you know raise questions without any inhibitions before going to class prepare for that class see what real life applications you can uh, relate to on that specific topic honestly some of the classes become very interesting for you some of the classes you were you would be wondering if you are able to at least make a passing grade of that right happens happens to everybody right don't be afraid of that again go seek professional help who are the professionals your faculty members or the professionals nobody else here right again every single person on campus uh from 1995 to 2000 they had a smiling face and they were very inviting and very professionally friendly whenever we went and asked for solutions right for certain problems that we had monram sir never gives out solutions for your questions he guides you to find the solution and that is true for every single person that i have seen at psg tech they always guide you they ask you certain questions they direct you and make you get to the answer right most of the time they made us feel like we got the answer we went there we asked the question somehow i myself got the answer that's the feeling that we had without knowing that well he or they were guiding us to get the answers right it's so much fun it's so much fun there are going to be times you are going to be stressed the exam weeks perhaps get a lot of sleep right one of the things that uh, i heard at the beginning of the talk is that distractions uh maybe it's a blessing maybe it's not but in 1995 we did not have smartphones there was nothing smart out there for us to carry in our hand in fact there were very few mobile phones right so the distractions were to the minimum still we had a lot of distractions i mean uh hostel games playing cricket uh just go to g block uh, at psg tech hostel there will be you go to any of the room randomly there will be discussions uh discussions on politics discussions on uh why we are not having uh you know uh, sirwani water for uh taking bath why are we having uh, some other uh, you know water that is salty uh how are we going to make through this break what are we going to do uh are we able to reserve our uh, train tickets to go home so many things right everyday activity <laughs> when we look at it it takes us by a storm and it pushes through the calendar right that's where you need to make it distinct plan for yourself so clean slate now there is no history when you enter a college for your bachelor's program whatever happened in high school it stays right there now you have a beautiful path forward you have a fresh set of faculty members again the main distinction between high school faculty and uh, college faculty college faculty are practicing professionals they have gone through several rich experiences solving frontier problems in their field or answering questions for the industry right and they have also trained a large amount of people who are you know wildly successful successful in their fields so don't be afraid they have their accomplishments but that's the blessing for us right to go through those people that's the blessing all right so distractions is very important you should know when to have fun when there are distractors and when you can selectively opt out of those distractions and say okay that's enough for now let's go ahead and take care of the things that are on the top of my priority list right what well, again going back to the experience at that point in time first year uh 12 uh no not 12 18 years of staying at home uh served by mom all the time right coming to a college staying on campus uh staying uh in in g block 
it made me tremendously homesick. Every week I used to rush to Madurai, where uh, I'm from, right? Every week I used to catch the train, go to Madurai, right? After the lab, computer lab on Saturday afternoon, go to Madurai, come back on Monday morning, right? But that changed somehow after a few, not because I lost my love for my parents and uh, you know siblings, that's not the case, but somehow the love grew to go into a brand new lab called as Festo Lab, Festo Lab for Pneumatic Automation. Dr. Mondram uh, was setting it up with the Festo people. They were not only giving the instruments, equipment to set things up, but they were also giving, they were also giving training on how to solve uh, you know, pneumatic problems. And uh, again, I still remember with a team of faculty, uh, we were allowed to sit in those trainings, receive professional training. Now, these are not the opportunity that every one of us may be able to get. You have to be there. And that's why I tell you, you have to be on campus. You have to be you know, there to avail this opportunity. Things happen right there on campus. They don't happen at, uh, happen at the hostel, right? So don't mistake me for saying this. You, you will have a lot of fun. You're going to have a lot of fun at hostel, at elsewhere outside, movie nights. Those are all going to happen. But you have to also facilitate for some of these very crucial opportunities to shine on you. And for that to happen, be there. Be there to an extent where the faculty has no uh, you know, way out but to give you some interesting problems to solve, to engage you. Otherwise, you are going to be on their neck all the time, right? So th this, again, is not me. And I didn't do it for the first time. I am pretty sure that the uh, principal and vice principal remember people like Himanshu. Uh, people like Giriraj uh, from way before me who have advised me to do that. So you get a chain of, you know, uh, people in different batches and they pass those secret to you, right? This is the secret sauce. Always tag along with the faculty member who you like. Who, now, they may be teaching some courses that you may like or you may not like, but they may be working on certain other things for their research, for their projects. In general, their knowledge area, their presentations and conferences, right? That might interest you. So tag along there. It's really, really, really important. Okay. All right. Uh, I know uh, Professor has asked me to talk about the transition from PSG to the US. Uh, again, this is a blessing from the place where you go to uh, do your undergraduate. It did not happen to me from anywhere else. Uh, we saw the seniors in PSG Tech at the hostel preparing for GRE. Some of them were preparing for GRE, some of them were preparing for MCAT, some of them for a uh, GATE, some of them for uh, GMAT, and all of, many of them were preparing for TOEFL. It never occurred to us like that's an extra effort. That's something that we have to do. It never occurred like that. We just went with the flow. All it takes is for the very first sheep in the batch to walk, the rest, the remaining will follow, right? It feels like that. That's why the place is important, right? The place where you attend college is very important. And I can, again, you are seeing somebody who is at a place that people say is good, right? I'm just enjoying my life, no matter whether it is good or not. So it's going nice for me. So that's a blessing. So that I tell you, right? So very many students have uh, reached their successes as well. They feel happy. They feel happy to come home, right? Call PSG Tech home. That's the success story that you're listening to. And this is the secret sauce again. The place is very important. Place means not the room, but the group of people you are with, the faculty members that you are with, the peers you are with, the group of colleagues you are with. You're going to be there, stuck there for four years or if you are in sandwich program for five years, right? So make the most of it. You're going to be friends for lifelong. I still have my friends. I can remember and recite all the 48 names of my classmates as per the roll number, right? So uh, we, we keep in touch. It's very important you do that too. It will come at some point in time during the third year, you would have to start preparing for the entrance exams for your graduate studies if you are opting for that path. Whether you are opting or not, do it. Do it for the fun of it and see how much you can uh, you know, achieve. 
I don't know, for some reason, my mind was set on going far away from home, exactly half the distance that you can travel around the globe, right? I was targeting the US to come to do graduate studies. I was not preparing to be in India to go and work in a company in India. That's because uh, maybe I can blame my professors. They made me feel so inadequate thinking that how am I going to solve real problems without knowing more? I need to equip myself more, right? And I looked at the seniors and they were at different institutions outside of the uh, uh, India because Again, there are few fields, few areas that certain places are recognized for. And supply chain management logistics was recognized in a certain school. It was, it was not a big deal back in India back then. This was 1990s, right? A millennium before now. So <laughs> that's what it feels like, right? So that's why we came to uh, the US. I don't know the information that you have today is really wide and rich. In those days, we used to go to PSG Tech Library. There was this one book called as US News, a magazine, and it would have been torn because every single person would have read that. And top five universities, that, that's what you can see in the ranking, right? And I chose industrial engineering because, again, uh, uh, because of PSG Tech, exposure to real life problems, went through the training uh, in sandwich program through the foundry division, through the, through the rotary machinery division, uh, through the CNC uh, machine division, then finally went into some of the teams uh, that were planning activities like production planning, uh, design, uh, accounting, and integrating different business process functions. Now that got me excited, right? And also went through certain other uh, industries such as uh, pre-call, uh, did a semester of uh, sandwich uh, training there, in-plant training there, and did an internship at uh, Coimbatore Automotive and Engineering. I don't know if that company has changed its name yet, but uh, I'm sure it's a fun experience there. And again, the Defense Research Development Lab. These experiences in terms of going through uh, different companies, realizing what excites you is very important. That helped me decide on what I wanted to do for masters, to do something in logistics, learn something deeper in, uh, in supply chain management. So I uh, came to Texas A&M. I had no idea of doing PhD. I wanted to finish my masters, go for a consulting job, uh, solve problems from one company to another. Uh, the, the dream was this, maybe I can embed this in your uh, mind, right? Just drive a car, go to a company, get their data, solve their problem, uh, move on to the next company, right? <laughs> so that was the dream that I had. Somehow, after coming to a and uh, Texas A&M College Station, there were problems that excited me a lot more in terms of its theoretical importance. For example, if you have a distribution warehouse, if you have a bunch of customers, right? You need to ship products from the distribution center to the different customers. How would you route, right, the delivery? That's a question. My experience from India, you just load the truck, you send it. You tell the driver how to do it and they will take care of it, right? Apparently this problem takes centuries to solve. It doesn't have an efficient solution method called as an algorithm that can work in short period of time. It is a computationally hard problem to solve. Such challenging problems actually excited me a lot more. And I did not even apply for you know, uh, placement in companies here. Directly applied for a doctoral program, got through it, had a lot of fun, right? So, the educational difference between PSG and the US, there are a few things that you need to know. The first thing I realized after coming to the US is, PSG prepped me thoroughly on the competency side. Don't make any mistake. Any graduate of PSG Tech will be very thorough, thoroughly prepared in their area of graduation. Now, when you go to a class, you get the training. It's a formal training, right? I then realized 
looking at some of the colleagues, how important it was to go through solving real life problems or internships, right? People here get a formal education. There are classes, if you, if you consider, for example, Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering, right? About 25% of your courses, right, give or take 15 courses, they are tagged for philosophy, theology, humanities and social sciences, nature, right? Uh, you have a course on self, you have a course on ethics, you have a course on fine arts, you have a course on literature. The first observation that I, uh, that I made to this sort of a degree plan was why are they wasting their time? Why are they not learning, you know, the calculus four, calculus five, six and that sequence, right? That's a huge difference. It is because of the professors, right? They held us through beyond the class time and walked us through, taught us how to communicate to a bunch of scientists, to a bunch of professionals. We were able to get that off the formal training. But imagine this, if you also have a formal training by going through an understanding of yourself, by going through the understanding of how to behave in a team environment, how to communicate effectively, and not only be you know, focused on becoming a leader in a team, but to actively manage a team, to follow a team, to contribute to the team many a times, even though you have the capability to lead the team, those are all very, very, very important. And these, they were eye-opening. And fortunately, with the group of faculty at Tech, we got the training. We were able to make it through here in the US, right? So I know that uh, uh, the professor has mentioned, the principal has mentioned that you guys will have lots of questions for me. Uh, I'm going to stop my talk right here and invite questions from you. Yes, sir. Uh, Gopal, yeah, audio is. Uh... Sorry, sir. Hello. Yes. They're not able to hear you. Some problem with audio. Are you able to hear me now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's okay now. Yeah. Now it's okay. Okay. So you're telling so... courses. Uh, Twenty-three percent of courses which deal with nature, philosophy, fine arts, literature, etc. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you were not able to hear since then? Yeah, since then. Yeah. Please, you can link it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So those were the formal training that people receive here to develop an engineer as an overall person. When people graduate from an undergraduate program from institutions in the U.S., they go and work for companies like Amazon or uh, Google. You don't see just engineers in these companies. In Amazon, Google, right, Apple, they just don't hire engineers. They hire engineers. How do you get this? Can you hear me now? Yeah, now we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, not sure what the problem was, but I was chatting and got muted. <laughs> you're, you're, uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, again, sorry, I apologize for any inconvenience, but I see that my mouth got my, uh, you know, was not touched. I was, it's right here. I'm not touching my mouse. The microphone got muted. I don't know. Maybe it's a software glitch. Uh, so I was saying that here people get the overall education. It's what is called as a liberal arts education. It prepares you as a whole human being, right? And it is essential and critical for you to interact with non-engineers. 
and develop solutions that people use. And when we are talking about consumers, they need not be engineers, right? So to create products and solutions for non-engineers, you need to understand that perspective. And the liberal arts component to your education brings that richness, right? So that, that's the beauty that I immediately observed when I looked at the syllabus, uh, the courses and the sequence at PSG iTech. There is a huge emphasis on ethics, ethical decision-making. There is a huge appreciation of self-reflection and how to develop yourself as a whole person. Those are very, very, very important. The high school mentality of, I need to only specialize in engineering, you know, should go away from us. We need to become an overall person who can solve problems. Don't typecast yourself as, I'm going to be a mechanical engineer, I'm going to be an industrial engineer, I'm going to be a biomedical engineer, I'm going to be an electrical engineer, right? You're going to be problem solvers who can improve the standard of living for all of us. So that, that's how it is seen here. Major difference, but you guys have the heads up there at PSG iTech because I've seen through your curriculum and there is a heavy focus on that as well. I do see a chat message. Let me switch over to the chat window. It's right here on the screen. Why did you leave India? Again, to do my master's, I was planning to go home uh, after doing the master's, but things changed. I, I was uh, bent on pursuing a doctoral program here. And uh, after that, uh, you know, uh, when you stay at a place for too long, you will feel home, right? So that's what happened here. And uh, I don't feel that the world is highly divided now. Yes, the politics maybe, but truly people are working very closely. Uh, India is just a phone call away or a Zoom meeting away. So blessed to have the technology. We are able to meet with the family members, friends, professional contacts anywhere in the world, right? So this helps us quite a bit. I do see a message, but it is an encrypted message. So I'm not able to read that in the chat window. Principal sir, can you please, uh, if you are able to see the question on the chat window. When is the right time to prepare for GRE exam? And what is the whole process we should undergo? And what are the benefits of doing this? When they start preparing for GRE? And what is the benefit, what is the process of preparing for GRE? The most ideal time is after the second year. Start of the third year, that's, that's the ideal time to do it. Preparing for GRE, you take your time, especially the analytical section, the verbal section, please take your time. Uh, I know that going through some rigorous courses, you will uh, achieve great scores in the analytical session, uh, but pay attention to the verbal session as well. It's very, very, very important. Uh, the whole process when, again, this is uh, 20 years back, right? We uh, had sources like uh, Kaplan, Barron's, those are the ones that we used. But I believe that there are too many coaching centers uh, for GRE or there are study groups uh, that are formed within campus, right? So please join them. Uh, I'm not recommending that you should join Kaplan or uh, any other coaching center. I'm not for it. Uh, if I can do it on my own by reading books and by, uh, you know, forming study groups with colleagues, my peers, you will also be able to, unless you really need that mentoring uh, from somebody outside, right? The applications, uh, again, the application process is very elaborate. You would need a whole year. So do not wait till the senior year. It would be worthwhile to study for GRE or any of the entrance examinations in your third year. Uh, Gopal. Uh, yes, sir. The, some people, somebody want to know, want, they want to know what is GRE exam by definition. Okay. And there is a general question, uh, which I will answer quickly. Pragati scholarship is for all students 
that means girls including management quota okay uh, don't worry I, i'll put a on 23rd we have our dean who will be talking about scholarship in detail okay yeah that's by the way please uh, gopal you may continue yes sir uh, graduate record examination it is an admissions exam just like how many of us uh, took the entrance exam i'm not sure if uh, entrance exam for college admission is uh, still in place but just like that uh, us universities and many other universities in different countries uh, they would seek for you to take a gre exam it has different sections there are two types of gre one is the gre general exam uh, nothing big like not, there you would not even um, have to review your calculus basics right it is such a basic topic like trigonometry algebra uh, linear equations that are uh, covered in the quantitative session for the analytical section uh, they have uh, very many uh, puzzle like problems how you are able to reason things out so it's focused on critical thinking and the third is the verbal section uh verbal section is where uh you may need some additional work uh because the us english is a little bit different from what we are exposed to uh back at home right maybe that has changed but uh, definitely at that point in time way back in uh 1998 uh we had to focus very heavily on the verbal session verbal section of the gre there is also another type of gre called as the subject gre many universities in the us do not require subject gre for admissions at least right i do see a few other questions here uh, any any plan of coming back to india we visit india very often uh, this i think is a question for uh, somebody up there <laughs> because uh, things are happening at a wild rate across the world uh, so it is a blessing wherever we are when we are connected with people like uh, having the mentorship forever right you are seeing this person who was a student 20 years back still uh, we have the luxury of uh, calling the principal through whatsapp whenever there is a question so that's the beauty of this when we are connected like this with our peers who we graduate who we graduate with right and uh, our own peers who we uh, develop new connections with the whole world is the same wherever you are it really doesn't matter Gopal, Gopal, yeah. Gopal, yes, sir. Gopal, now. Am I right? PhD I Tech. You are now in PhD I Tech. Yes, me. sir. Absolutely, the heart is fully right there. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, one more question questions. has come: Is what are the challenges that you face while pursuing education abroad? What challenges did you face? how to study was a big issue after we came to the us uh studying just using the books prescribed as textbooks was a problem there are too many other things that are not necessarily study related for example the distance the anxiety of going back home uh not seeing people who you are used to uh seeing people who are from different culture you have to take that effort to meet with new people these can be very positive experience for some of us they can be very intimidating for some certain others going to a place like texas a&m the campus itself took about a day and a half to uh you know understand and go through they gave a map for us to go through so getting lost was very common uh getting used to uh some greeting practices very small things like that so when you walk on the street at psd tech we used to walk like this right head down look at your toes and you look at your shoes and that's how you walk exactly 11 minutes from uh, the dawn of the uh, dawn to your industry or the foundry uh, at psd tech that's how we used to right used to walk like that same thing when we are doing it the person coming in front of you they would say hi or hello <laughs> at anm there is a tradition of uh, saying howdy so that's how they will greet you right so quietly calm composed you are walking thinking about certain things right head down and then a person coming in front of you who usually are 6 foot 6 feet tall and they say howdy to you you get intimidated right so those small things even those small things can intimidate you but then the most important thing is 
how to study was a big question. Professors here, when they come to class, they expect that you already know the material that they are going to cover. So imagine that, right? At the undergraduate level, teaching goes on like the usual way. But at the graduate level, you are expected to know the material before even you go to the class. And you are expected to discuss things. So it's called as the flipped classroom policy. So you study and do all the analysis and derivations at home. Nobody is going to do derivations on board when you are at a graduate school. People are going to give you problems that are beyond the textbook and that are beyond what you have seen uh, you know, in the textbooks. And they are going to push you forward on those. That was number one. So you need to be able to prepare for that. The second is, I don't know, maybe some of us have this uh, habit of forming groups and being comfortable studying in groups. If we go and uh, attend a class, design of machine elements, a homework problem was given. We discuss that. We have our own answers, by the way. We never copied. So I'm not saying we copy, right? That's a totally different issue. We discuss in groups. This is what it is. No, 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 this is what it is. This is that doesn't make any sense. So we fight like that, right? Within the group. Very rich discussion. That, that's good that we were not able to do here. People were expected to work individually on certain things like homework assignment. Otherwise it's, uh, it's regarded something different here. So you have to be better prepared. You cannot rely on others to tell you what it is. You have to know the stuff that you want to answer. Completely different. Uh, another thing is living on your own is totally different. Of course, you, when you go to PhD I tech hostel, you would feel that you are alone. You are not with your parents, right? Now imagine that you are here. You are not in a dorm. You are not in a hostel. You have your own apartment. You have to pay your rent. You have to pay your electricity bill. You have to pay your water bill. You in fact have a scholarship. You pay your taxes and you have to learn all that. You would Nobody tell, tells you you have to pay your rent. Expect yourself to pay electricity bill. You have to figure things out. And same deal. At Indian institutions, many a times you can look at the program and look at the courses that you want to take uh, for your graduate school, right? Here, that is no such plan. You have to develop your own plan. And do not expect your teachers to tell you or the faculty mentor or advisor to tell you what courses you should take, right? You have to assemble those courses that you can take. I'm talking about graduate school, not undergrad, right? So don't mistake me for bachelors, this is all masters and doctoral level. So that self-motivation, self-initiative is expected and is not just expected, but is a necessity here. So that was something very different. And uh, to adapt to this environment, it took, it took some learning curve there. Procedure to do MBA abroad. Ideally, uh, this is the advice that I give to my students when they graduate with the bachelors. We say that please go and work for at least five years. Know what it is to manage others, manage people. Then come back to do an MBA. It would make much more sense. On the other hand, if you're planning to do a master's in engineering or any technical field, do it immediately. Don't wait. Because the things that you have learned in a very rigorous manner they have a short lifespan. Once you graduate, take up a job, and then you are focused on solving certain type of problems, right? So with that inertia that you have immediately after graduation, if you want to pursue technical education, go for it immediately, right? What is the procedure to do internship at St. Mary's University? Two different ways. One is we have a career center where companies come in they advertise the position uh, that they have for internships. And uh, people also, like company folks, uh, who we are connected to as faculty, they talk to us and they give us interesting problems to solve and we connect people to them. This I learned again from Dr. Uh, Mohan Ramsar, who's the principal. At, this was long time back, 20 years back. Uh, he introduced a group of students, right, to the scientists at DRDL. So it became so natural uh, when I became a faculty to connect my students with the uh, project sponsors outside. 
I think I understood the question correctly, right? Uh, what is the procedure to do internship at St. Mary's University? Or is that intended for coming to St. Mary's University to do an internship? I think uh, it is a second option. That means uh, suppose somebody wants to do internship abroad, is there any provision uh, or uh, is there any financial implication? Uh, that kind of uh, question, maybe you can quickly touch upon, Gopal. Okay. That in fact, uh, I know that from PSG Tech, students have visited uh, uh, Texas A&M, for example, for internship. Uh, this was long time back again. Uh, about six, seven years back, a group of students from PSG Tech visited Texas A&M. They went to the global supply chain lab, did an internship there. This is very common. Usually uh, in the US, internship is a paid opportunity. So there are some uh, visa requirements for that. You either have to be on an F1 visa, the student visa, or an exchange visitor visa, which is a J1 visa. So once you're on that visa, you can come here, work in a company, uh, do an internship, or take a semester of uh, study abroad. You can do that. Again, by internship, if you are working in a company, they pay you. When I say they pay you, it covers uh, the living expenses in a very decent way uh, to stay here, but not necessarily take something back home, right? So it will cover all your costs to stay here. Usually that's how they pay internships. Uh, if you are taking courses abroad, uh, then it truly really depends on what institution you go to and their tuition rates, so on and so forth. There are also research opportunities that you can avail with different faculty members. So these are called a summer research, for example, and they may be available between the month of uh, May through August. So that's the summer, typical summer term for us. Uh, many students come here from abroad, uh, places like uh, India, China, uh, Philippines, South Korea, uh, very many people from the Middle East these days because their government is sponsoring a lot of students, Saudi Arabia, um, Qatar, uh, Kuwait. Those are the places where students come from. Also from Europe, Poland, uh, Germany. We have had students, Netherlands. We have had students. So they come here. They spend the summer here to do research with the faculty. And uh, many a times they sponsor their own uh, flight tickets and stay here. If there is a established uh, you know, graduate assistantship or some form of a fellowship that the faculty gives or the university uh, abroad gives, then that would cover some of your expenses. Usually it's not like a company internship. So it will cover partly your expenses, living expenses, right? So th did that answer your question? Yeah, I think that was really nice, uh, Dr. Gopal. Uh, just to add a point, uh, PhD ITech has an MOU with the University of Glasgow, and uh, awesome. uh, we do debut uh, students for two-week internship, and uh, they have nice time, as you rightly told, Dr. Gopal, where we have uh, students working on individual projects. About seventy students every year they visit uh, the University of Glasgow from various institutions uh, all over the globe, and it will be a wonderful opportunity. Similarly, we have a tie-up with the National University of Singapore, where, again, we permit students to go for summer internship, uh, along with PhD tech students, uh, PhD tech students also can join. Okay, the details we'll tell you uh, when we meet, uh, maybe you can, when you come back, you can always uh, talk to the department people, they can tell you more about it. And Absolutely. Regarding, yeah, regarding the uh, Pragati Scholarship, some more questions are being asked. All these questions will be answered on 23rd by the dean. He will tell you how to apply, whom to apply, what are the procedures, all those things. Okay, it has to be through the college. Month is it just month end is the last date. Okay, yeah, please. Maybe I think you can sum up, uh, Gopal. Uh, we are uh, slightly uh, over <laughs> your time. I know your time constraint also. Please. Thank you, sir. Uh, very nice again to meet all of you. Uh, it feels like the night can be spent talking to you guys for, and it did not stop till the next morning. But I understand that there are other, uh, you know, uh, programs lined up in your orientation. Uh, just to sum up, to be very point blank, don't stay in the hostel for too long. Just stay there for the night, get out, be on campus, expose yourself to the faculty in the department, right? It's very important for you. 
Uh, internship, very important. Please do that. Solve real problems. Meet with others. Learn how to solve problems from others. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Again, this is uh, something that I've borrowed, right? Everything is borrowed, but again, this is directly borrowed words of uh, Professor, uh, Principal Dr. Mohan Ram. Uh, never be afraid to make a mistake or face failure. Don't make it consciously, but never be afraid to do so. Learn from it, improvise. Very important thing that I want to say is professional network. There are platforms like LinkedIn. I want, this is again a challenge for all of you, right? Uh, as a PhD tech person to another PhD person, high tech person, right? So I'm, I'm just giving this as a challenge. Let's see how many of you add me on as your LinkedIn contact, right? Search me, add me to your LinkedIn and look at my connections and see if you need introduction to any of the people that I'm connected with. I'll be happy to connect you, okay? So that that is a prerequisite for that. You need to have a very clear picture of yourself, a very nice description of what you're doing at PSG Tech, what your major is, a professional, you know, a uh, uh, few words of what you are interested in. I can connect you with others, okay? Again, my network is very limited, few hundred people, but at least you can take off from their networks once you are connected with them, right? Negative thoughts, studying engineering is stressful. It's not going to be a cakewalk, right? I tell you that. Don't hold on and hang on to the negative thoughts. Deflect that to positive, make it to your advantage, get out of it and shine through, okay? Everybody, very many thousands of people have gone through, if not lakhs of people have gone through PhD institutions. Many of them, you know, uh, have told you this before. In order to be successful, it's not always, you know, climbing up. There will be many downfalls. People are successful because they know how to get up from a big downfall and continue their journey. So please remember that, okay? And uh, any other questions, I'm going to type this in the chat window. I know in the screen I'm looking at a different direction, but I'm paying attention to my chat windows on the other screen here. Uh, this is my contact information. And you are welcome to send me email or connect with me on LinkedIn anytime. And any questions, uh, you know, I, I'll be very pleased to answer. Uh, Gopal, again, I think that was a nice summing up of the whole uh, talk. So, so nice of you for having spent your time, valuable time, uh, for the benefit of iTech students. Can you just show the setup you have so that, you know, let students understand what kind of setup you have, you know, uh, you know but they don't know uh, how much a faculty plans for the meetings and the need for, you know, uh, having videos on, how the faculty can relate to students only when the videos are on. Okay, what arrangements you have so that, you know, you have the setup, you can kindly show that for our friends so that they can uh, connect with faculty in a better way, please. Absolutely, yes, sir. Uh, in the US, it is a requirement that you turn your camera on. Please do that because at least for me, I will not be able to talk to blank uh, screen. I cannot. Neither can I talk to other faculty colleagues, right? So please turn your camera on. It is very, uh, at least in the US, it's considered to be very rude to turn your camera off. And by policy, all the students should turn their camera on, right? I know uh, it takes some setup for the faculty. So I'm going to turn the camera here. This is the flat screen on which I'm seeing the chat window. This is my laptop on which I'm talking. And I turned this off because of the mic problem. I'm not, I wasn't sure if this equipment was causing some delay, but there is a projector here uh, that I'm projecting to. And I have been seeing you guys, your faces on the screen so that it's not too small, right? This is the second, this is another screen that I have. And uh, I also have an iPad on which I write so that when I have to take a class like optimization and I have to write mathematical formulas, it becomes very easy. It's really important to have a good mic that would uh, cancel out some of the surrounding noises and a uh, couple of speakers, Bluetooth would be good. Too many cable here <laughs> because I'm becoming a tech junkie, I guess. So this is the uh, atmosphere at home. 
and for students uh, one thing that highly that i would recommend is please do not use your phone to go to class i know covid has thrown a wrench uh, i was in india for about 6 months i had to take classes uh, right and it was all through the night uh, we had to take classes uh, one thing that i realized was in india when you have a phone like this it's easy to go for a uh, reliance geo like plan i did that i had the 1.5 gb per day plan uh, but then again i added uh, a plan called as a work from home plan so it gave me 3 gb per day uh, for another 150 rupees uh, that was very useful so if that is still uh, that option please use it turn your camera on it's very important even if you have a lower resolution fine don't use your phone to attend classes please don't do that look at your big screen hopefully a screen that is a computer not necessarily a laptop and interact try to interact through chat don't disrupt the class but try to interact through chat make your presence known to the faculty all faculty members appreciate that right when many of you are nodding or saying this or looking at me i was able to talk further or adjust my uh, speech right so it's very important you do that uh so thank you gopal dr gopal it was a wonderful input i think uh, particularly the last one uh, what are the importance of switching on the video and you know getting response and uh, connecting with faculty and all this i think uh, none of the other uh, speakers have told and uh, thank you for the uh, yeah, yeah okay yeah uh, please uh, and your advice regarding the cell phones uh, uh, all our itech students are uh, particularly the freshers are watching on uh, laptop or uh, system only they are not using cell phone that we have made it mandatory now i am sure that with your input uh, we will be requesting our all our friends to switch on the video you now come prepared so that you are comfortable with your video on and keep responding because the faculty are not seeing you if your video is off and it will be extremely difficult for the uh, faculty to communicate without getting feedback i hope uh, that point has been driven by our chief guest uh, thank you dr gopal it was wonderful i request professor chandramohan to give a formal vote of thanks please sir dr gopal krishnan very very happy to listen to you beautiful talk you have brought the experience what you had at psg tech campus to all our itech students you have practiced peer learning as they took the class concept way back in 95 itself even now many students even in phd tech also they don't practice peer learning but in phd i tech even from first year onwards we made them to practice peer learning there are separate halls also for peer learning a round table will be all sitting in a group we give problems they will be solving the problems each i mean a department has a peer learning hall itself in fact fifth class also we want all first year students to practice fifth class also already the books were given to the students students can start reading the books we can also go through the ppts which we plan to send in advance so we also would like to introduce the concept in psd i tech even from first year onwards so thanks a lot i really don't find words to thank uh, dr gopal krishnan kindly visit psd i tech campus while you visit india next time so many of our students would like to meet you in person that is why they want to know when you are going to come back to india kindly visit our i tech campus at the earliest while you visit i mean uh, india thanks a lot for sparing your valuable time i thank principal for writing uh, bringing gopal krishnan to itech students i thank mr navin balaji balakumar all the faculty members who are all helping us to organize this orientation program i thank all the first year students for the right to interaction with uh, mr gopal krishnan so nice meeting you good night gopal krishnan good night Thank you sir thank you i wish all of you success
and a beautiful day ahead. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Natrish Gopalakshan. Wonderful. Namaskaram, Ganda. All the best. Namaskaram, sir. Thank you. So.